Every morning is a great morning for joy and inspiration. It's Morning Joy on WRVS 89.9. Good morning. You're listening to Morning Joy. I'm Sheila Lee, the voice of joy right here on WRVS 89.9, your community voice. I just appreciate you having that dial locked in at 89.9. And of course, you know that Tuesdays are very, very special right here on Morning Joy. I always have a Tuesday feature to bless you real good, to give you some wisdom, some knowledge on some topics, different things to help you out. And of course, this is Third Tuesday. So we have our new feature, which is Parenting 101. Uh, And of course, Mary Felton, Dr. Mary Felton is here with me on this morning. Good morning, Mary. Good morning. Good morning. All right. We're here. We got it together this morning. It's so good to have her. We are just going to be blessing you real good with some different um, things that you can highlight uh, to help out uh, with uh, raising children, Parenting 101. Uh, If you've ever been a parent, you know that um, there's no one way that works for everybody. Uh, Everybody's situation may be a little different, but the ground rules, I mean, of what you can do when you're parenting, that's the same thing all the time. There's just some good rules that you can go by that will bless you and bless your children real, real good. So we're so excited again about having uh, this program as a part of our Tuesday lineup. So without further ado, how about that? (laughs) We're going to go to uh, Dr. Mary Felton. Good morning again. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. And what I will do today, I will be um, providing some study tips For the parents, I know many times um, parents indicate that the way students are taught today is a little bit different um, from what they um, were taught. And so today what I would love to do um, this morning is to um, provide those parents with some just some study tips and hope some of these nuggets would um, ease and some of the the frustration that I often hear um, when parents speak about the new ways that the students have to prepare. You know what, before we go right to the study tips, this may be someone's first time being able to listen on a Tuesday, and because we changed the time just for today until 8 o'clock, we may have some new listeners uh, for the first time. So if you would, could you please tell them a little bit about yourself before we go any further? Of course, of course. Well, um, I have served in education for many, many years. In fact, um, I began my educational journey right here in Elizabeth City as a substitute teacher over 20 years ago. And since that time, I've served as a business teacher as well as a school administrator. Um, So I've had the opportunity to... um, see firsthand uh, how learning uh, can happen and how frustrated sometimes it can be. Um, So that's just a little bit about me. I often tell and share my story of how I uh, was, I repeated the fourth grade and how it crushed me. And after my grandmother um, allowed me to cry and share the tears she came in the room and she says now it's time to you know dry the tears and pull up your sleeves and you know do the work and that's exactly what I had to do and so um, that is um, one of the experiences in my life that I think contributes to my passion for wanting to share tips and to help parents. All right, and if you would, now at this point, we're going to go back to study tips. Okay, Um, one of the study tips uh, that I recommend is to write down assignments. Many times students forget um, what it is they were asked to do. So I'm just going to name a few at this particular time, and then later on I'll share others. But write down those assignments, um, And it's best if they can have a particular time to study and avoid distractions. Many times we need to turn those televisions off and, you know, put those cell phones up. And we'll talk a little bit about that as well because we know that we can utilize technology as a study tool as well. Um, One of the, uh, I think, strategies many people don't think about is self-quizzing yourself self-quizzing and there is um, Quizlet. Quizlet.com is also 
technology, a way you can integrate technology for those students who like technology. And can you spell that out? Because sometimes when you, you're listening to it on the radio, you're thinking you spell it one way or they may spell it different. So if you could just spell that out for them. Yes, Quizlet. Q-U-I-Z-L-E-T dot com. One more time. Q-U-I-Z-L-E-T dot com. And that will allow them to create a quiz, and they can self-quiz themselves. And what is the benefit? When you self-test, you determine your progress, and it will identify areas in which they need to continue to study. They can also create flashcards to study. For example, if they have academic vocabulary, they can utilize flashcards because we know everyone does not have technology, but there are other ways that they can utilize these techniques. Um, and I do want to highlight reading at least 20 minutes daily to expand that knowledge and understanding so that students will understand what it is they are reading and understand what it is and to prepare for the next day. And we want them to define unfamiliar vocabulary, and to learn synonyms because we know that there are essential vocabulary words and if these students do not understand the meaning of the vocabulary words, it's going to be very difficult for them to comprehend the concept and understand the text. All right. Well, can you just run back through the ones that we've highlighted so far because we're going to get ready to go back to some more great gospel music in just a moment. Okay. Write down the assignments study at a time that they can best concentrate, avoid distractions and focus, self-test themselves to determine their progress. They can create flashcards to study academic vocabulary and read at least 20 minutes daily. Um, again, um, write down those, have those students write down the assignments before, I just want to clarify, before they leave school. Um, I had mentioned write down assignments, but we were talking about before they leave school to make sure they write down those assignments. Um, I do want to just mention about the mind maps, to create mind maps for the visual graphics as well. Um, that is another um, strategy because we have some visual students and they can draw circles and then they can write in the notes for the circles as well. Um, in, in addition to that, we want to talk about the, the mind map, and that is just a graph. Um, it can be a circles, it can be a box, but it's an image that will allow the student to write in the information. All right, we're back, and uh, we have more, and we're talking about what is a mind map. And you're saying M-I-N-D, uh, correct? Yes, mind map, okay. M-I-N-D-M-A-P. And it's basically a diagram, um, and it allows the student to visually organize the information, and it could be a, hierarch a hierarchy, um, and they could actually show the relationship. So they can draw circles, and then they could add information in the circle, and they could draw lines, but it's a visual diagram because we do have visual students. Um, we do have different students, with, and we learn differently. Right. So some students need to see it. That's the way they process. Others may desire to hear it. Uh, those are your audio, um, audio learners. And, and your kinesthetic learners, they hands-on. So the mind map would definitely address the needs for the visual students. And we're talking about personalizing education um, and personalizing learning. So that would be an opportunity to do that. Um, I will mention the, the Learning Journal at this time. Um, the Learning Journal is a great tool, and I decided to design the Learning Journal so it would help with that transition, and it would help the parents as well as the educators to interact with the learner. It's simply three questions, and they would answer these three questions every day. What was the easiest topic to learn? The second question, what was most challenging to learn and why? And the third question, what strategies were helpful? And at the bottom words uh, of the page, words to learn. So this would be an awesome way to have that student reflect daily on and to monitor the progress of the student. And it can be a tool for a parent to utilize to strike up some conversations with the child or the teacher. 
Okay, and how can they get the book? Amazon.com, um, as well as BarnesandNoble.com. It's okay, available. And, if, and if they need more information, what's a contact number for you? 252-339-1388. Again, 252-339-1388 is my contact number. And my email address is educator. 1981 at gmail.com. All right, got to spell educator out for me. I'm sorry, I'm in the spell mode today. E-D-A-C-U-T-O-R 1981 at gmail.com. One more time. Get slowly. So everybody that's out there, giving them time to get a pen, uh, something to write with their pad, or if they're getting their phone to write in the notes area, whatever they may be doing. Again, the email address. E D U C A. T O R nineteen eighty one at gmail.com. All right. So we're going to move on. Uh, we're going to get ready to go back to talking about uh, the parenting tips. Well, first of all, let's quickly highlight the ones you've already given because somebody might be writing these down. So we want to make sure they have the opportunity to get all of the information before we end uh, this segment. Encourage the students to write down the assignments daily. And that's from school. Yes. What? Well, before they leave school write down their assignment because sometimes they forget. And also the teacher may already be doing this, but if the student is looking and reminding themselves, okay, i got to make sure I do this. Exactly, exactly. And also um, study at a time that the student can best concentrate, avoid distractions and focus, self-test, self-quiz to determine the progress, create flashcards to study, those academic vocabulary words or concepts, and read at least 20 minutes daily to expand knowledge and understanding, as well as develop academic vocabulary. Okay, and we're going to go to a few more to add to the list. Yes, and I did mention the mind map, and we indicated I indicated that the mind map is a tool for the brain to capture thinking, and it goes um it goes well, and it's utilized well for those visual learners. I indicated that we have visual learners, we have audio learners, and we have hands-on, those kinesthetic learners. So the mind map would definitely um, help kinesthetic learners as well. Um, building that background knowledge is definitely um, essential and to review frequently. I definitely think students should not cram the reason why is because two or three weeks later when they need to retrieve that information, they will not have, have it in that long-term memory because they would have forgotten it. So um, we can complete these tasks. They can study. They can space that time out. If they, have, they know that they have an exam or a quiz and they have three or four weeks to study, I would definitely encourage them to study frequently and not wait until the last minute and cram. I just appreciate you keeping that dial locked in. And hopefully on today there are some new listeners. Um, um, the time change uh, was 8 o'clock today, but normally we're at 7.30 every Tuesday is when the featured segments are. And, of course, uh, Parenting 101, Morning Joy, Parenting 101 is featured every third Tuesday. So I just appreciate you, you, and most especially you. And I also appreciate you, Dr. Mary Felton. Good morning again. (laughs) Good morning. (laughs) All right. So we're going to just go right in and and do a little recap from last, the first program. So in September, we're just going to give you some highlights from that. And uh, then we'll be almost done with the segment. Yes. Um, uh, As I had mentioned about repeating the fourth grade and just reflecting back on how my grandmother dealt with that situation, um, the communication was very, very critical. Um, Just her encouraging me to do the best that I could, that was so important. And I want to emphasize the listening, Um, listening to understand my feelings. I think understanding the feelings of the children is so important and giving them that constructive feedback. But it's so important just to tell them to believe in themselves and to encourage them and to make sure that they do not give up. And as long as they are doing their best, that's what we ask for. And, is, and they need to know that their best is good enough. 
But we want to make sure that we encourage them. We want them to believe in themselves. And we need that awareness. And they need to know that we're there for them because we know that the world that we were raised in is a little bit different, maybe a lot a different, lot different. <laughs> than what they and the issues and, and challenges that they have. We did not have those. So it's critical that we have that relationship where we make them feel comfortable enough to come to us and talk to us about things that they're dealing with. But believing in themselves is, is, is critical. It's essential. And I want to thank you so much for helping us out with uh, Parenting 101. Uh, it's something that I was trying to get going last year. It just didn't uh, materialize, but I'm happy. I'm excited that this year we were able to uh, bring it all together. Um, I pray that it is blessing the parents uh, that listen, because so many times you can be a veteran parent. You could have had three kids, four kids, however many kids, but it's just sometimes it's good just to um, revisit, to refresh, to highlight the things that made uh, maybe the first child or, or your grandchild or whoever you were dealing with, what made it so special for them. And just to, again, be able to have a win-win situation for the parent and the child. So with that in mind, could you please give them the information about the book if they're interested in using that as a tool? Yes, the learning journal is available on Amazon.com. All right. And if someone wants to contact you for more information. Yes, again, my email is educator1981 at gmail.com. And my cell number is 252-339-1388. And I just appreciate you again helping us out. It has just been a blessing. I pray that the listeners have been blessed as well. Um, and we've enjoyed uh, bringing Parenting 101 to you. We enjoy everything that we can give to our listeners to help them and to bless them real, real good. So if you would, on the count of three, we will say together, please don't change that dial. One, two, three.